With interest rates on the rise, growth stocks have taken a big hit. In fact, some of the most aggressive growth stock ETFs have crashed over 50% in value. But for some investors, that still hasn't quelled their interest or appetite for growth investing. Now, these are the same folks that presumably enjoy eating pizza with a side of orange juice. Man, have they got some strong stomachs. On today's ETF Battles, we've got an audience-requested contest between a growth ETF from State Street Global Advisors going up against a plain vanilla S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard. So who wins the battle? Find out right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge, and I'm glad you're watching. Now, this is an easy show to understand. You simply send us your ETF ticker symbols that you'd like to see us analyze. And if it makes the cut, we put your ETF battle request on the show. Again, send us your ETF ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. Make it good. And now I have a big announcement. ETF Guide TV is now available on Amazon Fire TV and Roku, so you can watch us there or you can watch us here on YouTube. You can also listen to us via podcast at iTunes or Spotify. The bottom line is you can run from us, but you can't hide from us because we're everywhere. Today's ETF battle was requested by a viewer named Jose Luis Monreal Chavaria. Muchas gracias, Jose. For your excelente ETF battles request. Now, this is a matchup between ticker symbol Spy G from State Street Global Advisors going up against ticker symbol VOO from Vanguard. And that one tracks that plain SP 500 index. And um, this is a, a familiar ETF that's widely held by many investors. So, Judging today's contest is a duo extraordinaire. We've got David Durking from TheStreet.com and Dave Krensis from ETF Portfolio Management. Guys, great to see both of you. Welcome back. Hey, Ron, David, let's battle. Hey, guys, great to see you both again. Our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then the mystery. Now, for the mystery category, that's where you, our judges, can pick any factor or thing that you feel that is crucial to today's contest. Now, you can also opt for a split decision. You can nominate wildcard ETFs if you feel there's a better choice elsewhere. And it's uh, completely up to you, our judges. We'll see what you come up with. I have a feeling we'll get some wild cards on today's program. I've got the scorekeeping duties. And at the end of the show, we will declare an overall winner based on what our judges come up with. So I'll be keeping track. Also, one other reminder that none of the ETF battles that we do on the program are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or any of our judges. So let's kick things off with Dave Krinsis. The first category is cost. Dave, get us started. In this battle, Spy G versus VU, we have two passive, broadly diversified U.S. equity funds for aggressive growth allocations. These ETFs are built for ultra low cost with expense ratios under five basis points. However, SPY growth gives you double the technology exposure, which has been extremely favorable long term. So on a long term opportunity adjusted basis, I give the win on cost to SPY G. Thank you, Dave. Let's shift to David. David, how do you see it in terms of cost between these two ETFs? Yeah, with VOO at three basis points and SPY G at four, uh, it's uh, great on cost, uh, no matter which one you go with. Uh, when costs are this low, I think you could, you're splitting hairs choosing between three and four basis points. I think they're both terrific. So I'm just going to call this one a split decision. Thank you, David. Our next category is exposure strategy, and you're still up. So give us your analysis. Yeah, VOO obviously covers the S&P 500, so everybody knows what that's about. Uh, SPY G starts with the S&P 500 and then tilts towards companies that have uh, strong sales growth, earnings momentum, and price momentum. So I think that's a real nice way to sort of target the uh, more growth-oriented names of the S&P 500. So I kind of like how that's structured. VOO, I think, is... Uh, ideal for a good core holding in anybody's portfolio. I think SPY G 
based on cost and how it's built is perfect as a satellite holding if you want to add a little pop to your portfolio and try to enhance your return. So I think they're both uh, excellent, uh, excellently structured, uh, great on cost. So I think it's a split decision on exposure. VOO is good for core, spy Jeep, good for satellite holdings. Dave Krinsis, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of exposure strategy? Well, as David explained, uh, for exposure, VOO gives you the S&P 500 with 27% in Infotech, and SPY growth gives you a tilt towards higher sales growth and momentum with 44% in tech. This means SPY growth is closer to the NASDAQ 100 QQQ, which has 50% in tech. Since artificial intelligence is expected to reach IQ levels far above humans, we believe investors will benefit from extra tech exposure long term. However, growth in technology are dangerous in a bear market, and the spike in commodities and interest rates have been extra challenging for stocks. Given the additional risk from Federal Reserve quantitative tightening, I call the exposure category a split decision in favor of wild cards, cash, and energy. Principal protection is always the top priority in portfolio management. And do you have a specific uh, ticker symbol for energy, Dave? Yes, there are a few uh, we'll discuss in the performance section coming up, so uh, stay tuned. Very good. So that takes us next to performance. And Dave, you're up, so give us your analysis on performance between these two funds. Well, performance is what really matters, right? And as you would expect, the extra tech in SPY G helped over the long term and hurt over the short term. This data chart shows that over the past decade, SPY G returned 15% annualized and fell by 15% over the past year. The S&P annualized 13% and fell by 9% over the past year. To mitigate losses in this bear market, our active strategies shifted to overweight cash and small allocations to energy. We even shifted to 100% cash at times to protect principal. Now, energy was certainly out of favor this past decade. However, the tables have turned. This graph shows that over just the past 12 months, XLE gained 77%. The smaller energy natural gas index fund was up 102%. And the two times levered energy fund symbol ERX delivered 174%. So at ETFPM, we've been trading all three of these energy securities. So on performance, I call it a win for large cap, cap, large cap energy wildcard XLE. And in its absence here, I call it a split decision. Thank you, Dave. David, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of performance? Dave ran down all the numbers, so I won't repeat those here, but uh, he's right on. Spy G uh, growth has outperformed the market pretty much consistently ever since the financial crisis. So it's no surprise to see that that fund has outperformed the S&P 500 by about 150 basis points annually, give or take. Uh, It's in the top 10% of its category in large cap growth funds. So uh, even the simple strategy that it uses has uh, has made it a top performer. So I think on an historical basis alone, I think you have to give the win to Spy G here. But as Dave uh, mentioned, the drawdown has been greater on Spy G over the past year or so. So with the caveat that uh, the present is a bit of a different environment than the past decade has been, I'll give Spy G the win on performance. That takes us next to the mystery battle category. This is where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors to make their persuasive arguments. So, David, what is your mystery battle category and who wins it? Yeah, when you're looking at growth funds, I think it's important to take a look at the volatility of them because uh, everybody tends to focus on absolute returns. But if you're taking an excessive amount of risk to get that extra return, it might not be worth it. So uh, on the volatility front, uh, SPY G is about 9% more volatile looking over the past decade or so, which isn't surprising. Over the decade, though, it's uh, had about an 11% greater return than the S&P 500. And that's exactly the kind of risk reward profile you want to see in your portfolio. It's perfectly fine to take extra risk if you're being compensated for it. And SPY-G has done that over the past decade to 15 years. So uh, based on volatility and 
by extension, risk-adjusted returns. I'm going to give the win to Spy G uh, on this category, again, with the caveat that the next decade may look a lot different than the last one. Dave Krins, is your opportunity to give us your mystery battle category. What is it and who wins it? Ron, you know, I always say position size is critical in portfolio management because it can make all the difference. Now, SPY Growth and VU are both core ETFs. So we could allocate up to 100% in either fund, although I would pick QQQ if I wanted extra tech exposure. As for wildcard XLE and energy in general, we would typically limit that exposure to 30 to 60%. And in this dangerous market environment, all of those figures would be lower and could sometimes be a 0% allocation. So on position weighting, I call it a split decision. That takes us next to the part of the show where our judges can give us their overall battle winner. So Dave Princess, give it to us. Okay, to recap this passive core equity aggressive growth thriller, our focus has been on protection in this bear market. Given the broad decline, we were forced to raise cash significantly. In my opinion, the commodity spike and quantitative Fed tightening both strongly favor cash, energy, and active rules-based strategies with proven risk controls that can adjust to fast-changing markets. At ETFPM, we've been telling investors for months to shift focus to cash and energy. It seems the risk in traditional passive index investing has been underestimated. At the market low this past June, the unlevered balanced investable benchmark was down roughly 24% in less than six months. So I call this battle a win for cash and large cap energy wildcard XLE. And in their absence, I call it a split decision. David Durking, your final chance to weigh in with your overall battle winner. Yeah, with both Spy G and VOO, I really don't think there's a whole lot to dislike about either one of them. I think uh, with VOO, obviously, you get uh, terrific coverage of the entire large large cap market for basically nothing. You get the same thing with Spy G, just tilted more towards the growth side. I think both of these would make a great addition to a portfolio, just kind of depending on what you're looking at. Do you want a core position or do you want something to sort of augment a core position in the S&P 500 or the U.S. total market? So I think for what they're both setting out to accomplish, I think they both do a great job. So I'm going to give this one a split decision. Well, our judges have spoken. And according to my battle scorecard, this is a split decision across the board between Spy G, VOO, and then those wild cards that, uh, that were mentioned by Dave Krinsis, XLE, Large Cap Energy, was his choice. And really, at the end of the day, it boils down to your outlook. What is your outlook in the short run? Obviously, uh, the stock market has not been a good place in 2022 for S&P 500 investors and for growth investors. These have been hard hit areas, but as far as longer term investments and capital to allocate for a longer period of time, you know, these are still what we call core areas of the market, core positions inside of a portfolio that uh, can be bought and held for long periods of time. Of course, in those shorter periods of time, like now, you're going to have to write out the, the ups and downs. But overall, I think both of our judges made some solid points. And uh, great job, judges, at breaking down today's battle between VOO and Spy G. Thanks, guys. Good to talk to you. Thanks, guys. Stay positive, everybody. Well, thank you again, Dave and David, for your thoughtful analysis on today's growth ETF, S&P 500 Rumble. Visit the description section below for research links to our judges. While you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. You'll also see viewer resources We've got lots of good links there, online classes and financial tools. Don't forget to join our margin of safety tool waiting list. So again, you'll find that under viewer resources. Which ETF battles would you like to see in our next episode? Post your ETF ticker symbols in our comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF guide. If we choose your battle, you win your choice of an ETF battle shirt or a coffee mug. I'm Rhonda Leggy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.